Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Carlos Lopez. I'm a product marketing manager for our DLP Pico uh, products team. And I also want to introduce Shredevi, who is also on the line with us. And if you have any technical questions, feel free throughout the presentation to ask those via chat, and we'll do our best to answer those. So we will be covering the DLP Pico 0.16 chipset and DMD for the smallest projection display applications. Uh, we'll start off with an introduction into DLP Pico technology, and we'll go into an overview of the 0.16 chipset itself, and we'll then talk about the projection module size and how small it can get and the performance. And we'll, we'll also share some examples of ultra compact display applications this chipset would be a really good fit for. And we'll finish with how to get started and some of the resources that would be helpful. So for those that are not familiar with DLP, uh, it is a technology that's a leader in digital cinema projection and MEMS. Uh, in fact, nine out of 10 worldwide cinemas use DLP technology. And at the heart of the, of the technology is a digital micro mirror device or DMD which has an array of mirrors that digitally switch. And it's an extremely versatile technology. And so it works with LED, illumination, lasers, lamps. And it also works across a very broad spectrum of wavelength, as you can see down on the bottom. So when you think about DLP and you visit us on the web, you'll see a few different categories of DLP products. Um, you'll see light control uh, designed for non-display applications ranging from 3D printers to 3D scanners <clears throat> to spectrometers. You'll also see automotive qualified chipsets, which go into high resolution headlights, head-up displays, dynamic ground projection, and even transparent window displays. And then, of course, you'll see what I think DLP is most known for, which is the display and projection chipsets. And this is where we're going to focus our time today, specifically in the Pico chipsets, where we, where we focus on smaller size solutions. So first, let's take a look at just a typical subsystem for a DLP display. Um, you'll see in the blue are the components that DLP offers. And when you hear us mention the term chipset, that typically is referring to a controller, which the, the part number usually starts with a DLP-C, which stands for controller. And you also see a, a DMD as part of that chipset. So, so typically you'll see the DMD part number start with the DLP and then some numbers and letters. And the first couple of numbers represent the diagonal size in inches for the array of mirrors inside that DMD. Now, in addition, DLP also provides a PMIC and LED driver, and those are the DLP-A devices. And so we'll share a little bit about the entire chipset that's, that is new and coming out um, today for the 0.16. The DLP Pico chipsets fit into a wide range of display applications, as you can see on the list on the far right. And we wanted to start with sharing some of the examples of the smallest, lowest power display applications, which include things like smartphones and tablets, uh, embedded type of solutions, smartphone companions as well, uh, AR glasses, robotics, appliances, smart displays, AR signage, educational toys, interactive lighting, and so forth. So we'll get into more detail um, on the type of applications that the new 0.16 chipset can fit into later in the presentation. <clears throat> but when we look at this specific category of Pico chipsets, which is the smallest and lowest power, there's a few key advantages I wanted to highlight um, that DLP is really known for. One is delivering very bright and vivid uh, images with highly reflective mirrors. And so today, 
uh, the smallest deal PP code chips had an array of mirrors of 0.2 inches, roughly, and they can get all the way up to 300 lumens. And then, of course, there is low power with highly efficient optical systems and image processing algorithms like the content adaptive illumination control algorithm that is inside the controller. This enables brighter and lower power images. And then, of course, and this is where the focus will be today, there's also small size. And so with the 0.16, this will be the first time we offer a DMD with a micro mirror array under 0.2 inches. And so this is gonna be, this is enabling the smallest optics ever with DLP technology. And something that's also very important to many applications is the ability to get very thin in the optical engines and the optical module. And, and this chipset really enables us to get really thin in, in, our, in our projection modules. So let's jump into the 0.16 chipset, the smallest form factor and lowest power DLP solution that can enable up to 100 lumens uh, today. So this chipset has an array of mirrors that's roughly 20% smaller than the previous generation chipset, and the array, the area of that array is 40% smaller than the next smallest DMD. And so overall, this enables up to 80% smaller optics than what we have in the market today um, with DLP in the optical module. And of course, it is offering this small capability with the ability to maintain or even achieve higher brightness and efficiency. The 0.16 chipset does offer two different options. Uh, one is an NHD resolution, and another is a lower resolution, which is QNHD. And I'll get into uh, the specifics of the resolution here in just a little bit. The DMD is designed with side illumination, and I'll show you what that does and what that enables as far as the optical module size in just a little bit. And then of course, it comes with the dedicated display controllers, the DLPC 3421 and the 3420, which are optimized for small form factor and, uh, and, and specifically go with the uh, corresponding NHD DMD, DLP 160 CP, and the QNHD, which is the DLP 160 AP. So let's look at how this fits into the portfolio of DLP Pico chipsets today. And so today, if you look at the portfolio of chipsets, uh, we have an ultra mobile, ultra low power portion of the portfolio. These are all 0.2 inch diagonal chipsets that range from wide VGA to 1080p. And now this new 0.16 chipset is creating a new category that we call the smallest and lowest power chipsets. The QNHD has a max input resolution of 320 by 180, and the NHD has a resolution of 640 by 360, and can also go up to 360 hertz frame rate on a parallel uh, interface. Okay, so if we look at the overview for the 0.16 NHD chipset, um, a few things I want to highlight. Uh, one is, again, the DMD is side illuminated, can achieve up to 100 lumens in brightness. It is 640 by 360 display resolution and can support up to wide VGA, 360 hertz input frame rate. The controller has parallel and DSI input uh, interface. It does have an embedded frame memory inside, which helps lower the bomb. And it also includes part of our IntelliBright uh, suite of algorithms, uh, which is called CAKE, or Content Adaptive Illumination Control. The chipset pairs with the DLP-A2000 and the DLP-A2005. Those PMIX also drive the LED uh, and can drive up to uh, roughly 10 watts of power on the LED side. 
So some of the benefits you can see on the bottom um, are it enables the smallest form factor for the optical module, under two cubic centimeters optical modules, um, which is an up to 80% smaller than the previous generation, lower bomb cost with the lowest cost optics and electronics, as well as eliminating external frame memory, DSI to parallel bridge, if DSI is what you need, uh, this already has DSI built in as an interface. And then of course, with a video performance coming from a really small package, the uh, up to wide VGA input, keystone correction, and of course, um, maximizing the ability to uh, to efficiently project bright images at the lowest possible power with the content adaptive illumination control. And if you look at the QNHD chipset, there's very much, these are very similar chipsets. Uh, the only thing that I'll spike out are a couple of things. One, this one has a lower resolution, so 320 by 180, roughly half the resolution. And it has a max input resolution of that of 320 by 180, which is Q and HD, and a lower frame rate of 60 hertz. You still have the parallel and DSI input, embedded frame memory, the 8-bit RGB, 1D keystone correction, and also the same PMIC LED drive support. And so again, really this, what is this enabling for us? And, and really this chipset with the lower resolution for those applications with, uh, when it's an embedded system and you're really looking for an informational display type of performance with basic graphics and, and you really need something that's uh, maybe, maybe even monochrome, even though it does have RGB capability, it will also support uh, a monochrome uh, black and white type of illumination uh, if, if you need something very basic. So let's talk about the optics that this enables. So looking at the optical module size, uh, initially in the Gen 1, uh, which if you look at the, the 0.2 NHD that's available today, okay? The, the design for the optics was um, affected by the illumination angle. And so the DMD before was corner illuminated. And when it's corner illuminated, it makes it difficult to make the optics as thin as possible. The 0.2 NEC was the most affordable chipset in our portfolio. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to share this as an example of, of what the 0.16 can do. There is another chipset called the DLP2010, the 0.2 wide VGA. This one can enable, it is side illumination and it can enable smaller optical sizes than this. Um, however, uh, the 0.16 is not only the most affordable, but also can get to the smallest size. So now comparing to this 0.16 design that our optics team was able to put together, this is enabling 1.65 cubic centimeters compared to 8.1 in the previous generation. Mostly because, like I said, the array area goes down by over 40%, and because of side illumination, it enables inline optical designs uh, instead of this U shape that you had with the previous generation. Um, and this enables us to get to really small optical sizes. And by the way, the 8.1 cubic centimeters was even assuming we were compromising a little bit on one of the tilt uh, prisms. Uh, just to make the height as small as possible, down to nine millimeters. Over here, we were able to get the height down to 4.8 millimeters. So up to 80% reduction in optic size compared to a 0.2 wide VGA, which gets smaller than, than this on the left, uh, it's, it's uh, about 48%, up to, up to 50, 40 to 50% reduction in size even. So now let's look at some of the example applications that this really small optical module uh, using the 0.16 DMD can, uh, can fit into and enable. And so first let's take a look at AR glasses. 
In AR, uh, some of the things uh, and some of the benefits that you get with, with this chipset and with DLP technology. So in, in AR overlay, you have to overlay information to improve productivity and, and throughput uh, in, in, in applications like warehouses and remote service uh, type of applications. Uh, you also need a high optical efficiency, uh, which requires less illumination power um, for that target brightness level. You need fast pixel switching, uh, which enables high, you know, a high frame rate, uh, low latency, uh, vivid colors, and a transparent background. So as you can see in the image here on the left, on the left you don't want to be able to see this overlay of, of, of uh, the image. You want, you want the, that image to be completely transparent. So high contrast is extremely important. And then of course, content adaptive illumination control helps you to manage the power and, and the brightness um, and the smaller gaps between the pixels helps a lot too. So these are all some of the benefits you get from DLP and that come with the 0.16. Now down on the bottom left, you can see an example uh, 0.16 eyepiece optical design. And because of that side illuminated design on the DMD, <clears throat> you can really get to a slim inline optical design for a very compact AR glasses. In this case, the eyepiece, uh, the eyepiece only is 0.23 cubic centimeters. So you can imagine how small you can get. And, and in this design, this is a 30 degree field of view diagonal, and you can actually download this reference design on TI.com, and it's available today in the product folder for uh, the 0.16 DMDs. Now looking at uh, appliances, again, uh, this is where uh, we can see some very unique industrial designs. Uh, in, in many cases, a large image is required from a very small form factor. On-demand displays that disappear when turned off are important. You know, Free-form displays, display, you can display on any surface, including a heated cooktop, for example, and you can incorporate interactivity, dynamically change content based on the environment. And of course, you can pair with transparent film to display on glass or refrigerators, or other transparent locations, as you can see in those examples. And again, there's, there's also an optical reference design available on TI.com. Uh, there's actually two designs in that, uh, in that reference design, one for a, a two-channel uh, optical design with, with two-channel uh, of LED, as well as a three-channel LED for, for a little bit higher brightness. And then the, the third example I wanted to show is in robotics. And so in this case, again, projecting on any service is important, on-demand display, large image from small form factor. You need the high contrast, wide color gamut. It pairs with a low cost camera to find and highlight objects. <clears throat> and we've found that uh, this could be something from a, from a projection standpoint, um, that helps a lot with productivity in warehouses, factories, etc. With the 0.16, you get that extremely small form factor. And so if you're just trying to embed into a very compact space, whether it's uh, something that's low to the ground um, or something that's higher up and you're just projecting onto shelves, uh, the 0.16 would give you that flexibility to embed uh, a, a small projection unit into the robot. Now I want to share about some of the development options for the 0.16. So there's, there's three different avenues um, within the ecosystem for developing a product using DLP technology. Um, I'm going to start on the right side first, and so this would probably be the fastest quickest way to market. And so today, there are optical module makers, there are system integrators who have a lot of experience developing with DLP technology, whether it's the electronics or the optics, 
and they can develop a turnkey solution for you, uh, whether you're embedding it into a product or it's a standalone product. Now, here in the middle, there's also an approach where you work directly with the system integrator. You have a little bit more customized ability, uh, customizability. Um, and, and they can also source the optical module in many cases from uh, various suppliers, various optical module suppliers. Um, and you can work with them on that. Or you can, in some cases, work with a system integrator that develops both the optical module that includes the DMD or, uh, and the electronics, rather. And then on the far left, you have more of a custom approach. And this would be working directly with the optical module manufacturers to design the product from the ground up specific to your needs. And if you're looking to evaluate the 0.16 and see, hey, what does the performance look like? Well, we have a range of evaluation modules available today, as you can see here in this picture. Uh, the 0.16 does not have a specific EVM available for it yet, but there will be one coming soon. And if you needed to evaluate right away, my recommendation would be to go with the DLP 3010 EVM G2, okay? And in our ETE forum, we would be able to give you instructions on how to turn down the, um, the resolution and, and actually simulate the performance of the 0.16 and it would turn down the brightness as well. Okay, and lastly, there's uh, several resources already available on TI.com. You can even order uh, samples and prototypes of the DMD today. Um, the, the, both the QNHD and the NHD is available on TI.com. Uh, you can go to the product folders, and uh, review the data sheets. And then of course, there's a getting started video along with an application note that goes into a lot more detail. If you're new to DLP and you wanna see, hey, how do I get started with this chipset on my product? That's where I would recommend you go first. Now, also, what I would also recommend is this TI DLP system design optical module specifications application note. If you're not familiar with it, it will give you a really good summary of what you need to know as you're trying to navigate the different optical modules that are possible for your 0.16 chipset or any other chipset with DLP. And then lastly, there is a third party search tool that you can also go to on TI.com, it's available today, and it will give you a long list of all the optical modules and all the specifications for them so you can search for the optical module that's on the shelf available today for your for your application and there's also third-party uh, resources in there as well for system integrators and other components that you may need for your product so a whole host of resources for you there um, and if you have any questions you can ask that in the chat but please note you can go and visit www.ti.com slash NPU, and you'll see this presentation so that you can come back and review any of this information. And of course, come visit us at ti.com slash DLP, and you'll be able to find more information about DLP Tico products and specifically the 0.16 chipset. And so with that, I just wanna thank everybody for joining and I hope this was helpful for you in uh, learning about the 0.16 chipset. Thanks everyone.